Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and, and I have... A, go ahead. I'm sorry, and I'm Rafina Antonetti. And we are your host today, and uh, we're just having a good time in the Word of God and just studying. And we've been studying now, started yesterday, on wives and husbands in the Bible, uh, because Paul addresses this, but he gives us a, a balance to show us the authority of Christ over his church and uh, the authority of husband as the head and the wife as the wife of the head. How does it work? How does it come all together? Um, I asked my wife a, a few questions, and uh, we have to understand that going back to Genesis, that uh, something happens at the fall. And here the Lord says that, that uh, you will desire your husband. Uh, he would increase, first of all, her labor pains. And that, in, you know, in, um, in, uh, in, in pain, you will raise up your children. So I don't think it's just talking about having birth. There was pain in birth after the fall. Uh, people say, did she have pain before the fall? There were no children before the fall. They, they fell right away. So were they supposed to have pain? That should be the question. That's open. I leave that to you. But anyway, she had pain at childbirth, and she had pain raising up those children. And I don't know about you, but our children, raising up children, can be pain. Full. Very. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, he, but he says something very interesting. He says that you will desire your husband, but he will uh, dominate you. He will subject you. And I think that's the whole premises of the fallen state in marriage um when you ask certain questions it arouses certain things especially the word submission uh you which know, we discussed you, yesterday a little bit yep mm -hmm. and submission is not an easy word because you know uh, we all have to submit to something we all have authority over us and my wife points out this morning that we all have sometimes a um a problem with submission whether male or female but however when we're talking about here uh and we're going to just dig, you know, dig into the scripture and see exactly what Paul is illustrating here when it comes to authority and uh, the marriage. So let's dig in. Uh, I'm going to read uh, verse 25 through 27. Okay. Husbands, love your wives even as the Christ also loved the congregation and gave himself for her. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her glorious for himself a congregation, or ecclesia, the church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. You know, the whole concept of husbands or man, ish, and isha, as we talked about yesterday, so you may want to go back to the first video, uh, how God cleverly put ish in the very word beginning in Genesis, and so he always had family and marriage in mind. God didn't create the earth just to be an earth, but he had mishpocha, according to the family, according to the mishpocha, he had family in mind to rule the earth, to be in the earth. Isn't that, isn't that how it's going to be at the end? When the judgment is done, the Bible says that the bride, the new bride, or excuse me, the new Jerusalem comes down, which is the bride of Christ, we're not going to be in heaven as we see uh, when people in heaven now. He's going to create a new earth and a new heaven, and we're supposed to be here. Huh. A new earth. But isn't that what Jesus also said in the Mount, on the Sermon on the Mount? He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want this earth right now. <laughs> there are Christians going around saying, no, we're going to possess the earth, and we're going to say, not this earth. <laughs> I don't want this earth. Look what's on this earth. Enough. But the new one, where it says that, that, that the lion will lay down with the lamb. Amen. Wow. Amen. It, says, it even says in Isaiah that the children will be able, <laughs> I don't know how it works, but that the child may be able to put his hand into, into the, the hole where a snake is and not get bitten. Thank you, Lord. Are there going to be snakes? I don't know. But one thing is for sure, whatever is in that new earth, it's going to be peaceful. There's going to be no strife. And so... That's how it is. But here, here we have strife. We have all kinds of stuff. And it is, it is in our marriage. Like I said, my wife and I, we never argue. But she said we have times of intense fellowship. And Amen. that's okay. You know what it does for us? It strengthens marriage. Iron sharpens iron the way a friend sharpens a friend. 
And I want to say this to you husbands or to you who are looking to get married one day, for you to understand this. Do not marry a woman unless you're willing to die for her. Mm. It's got to be settled in the heart already. You would take a bullet. You would do whatever you have to do to save your wife. Because Christ died upon the cross to bring his people to him. Mm -hmm. And so he loves us. He says, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the congregation. What does that tell me? That tells me that I have to sacrifice for my wife. That tells me that I have to be able to lay down my life for my wife. Huh. But also, it tells us here that he gave himself for her. That's the whole concept here of marriage, that we give ourselves over to the love that we have for our, do for our uh, wives because Christ loved the church. That is the example of a true husband in marriage. You know, when um, I was looking and, and, and studying and meditating on the scripture, um, the 25th uh, verse, where it says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I was really like, like really meditating on that because to me it felt like that is such a tall order that the Lord would command the husband to love his wife as Christ loves the church and mm -hmm. gave himself up. Because I'm thinking um, for us to have that kind of love mm -hmm. or for a man to have that kind of love for his wife, he truly has to understand what Christ did. That's correct. On the cross. That's right. To want to um, sacrifice or yes. be a part of, of, of that. And, and obviously the Lord thought that this was something that could be achieved by a man mm -hmm. because it's in his word, mm -hmm. okay? And he's not gonna give us something in his word that he doesn't feel that, or, or he doesn't think that we can accomplish because his thoughts are not are higher than our thoughts. That's correct. Right? Yes. So when I was looking at the word husband in the, in the Greek, I came up with three words in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because I don't know anything about Greek, but I was looking the letters up, right? And so one, three of the words that came up in the word husband Jesus. was, one was hat, mm -hmm. which is, as we know, a hat is a covering or something to protect us from the elements, right? Mm -hmm. The other word was rock. And we know that a rock is something solid. It's hard to, to break, mm -hmm. right? And then the other one, which I found even more interesting, was the word father. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a father, like our Heavenly Father, is someone that protects us, that provides for us. And, and, and also a father is someone that is placed there as a shepherd mm -hmm. to overlook you know, the family, the wife, and everything like that. And I just found that to be so interesting that that word would be father also because, you know, a lot of times we say um, women end up marrying men like their father, right? So so I just thought that that was really, um, really funny and and just just revealing, you know, just revealing that he would, that he would put those three words in the word, Husband in the Greek language, in the Greek, in the Greek, yeah. in the Greek mm -hmm. with the Greek letters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. Because actually, the word is an, an anar, 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 mm -hmm. anar, and it means mm -hmm. to be a fellow, a husband, a, a man. Mm -hmm. But but in the Greek, when you look at the letters, mm -hmm. it came up with these three words, and I just found it amazing that he would put a father image or figure that's right, um, as our husband to cover us and be a solid foundation in the family setting. And you know, you use the word uh, hat, rock, father, uh, and the word anar uh, in the Greek is very close, of course, to the Hebrew in the sense of letters. The, the first letter anar is actually the aleph. It is, and, uh, it is. Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah. So, oh, so then you did yeah. know something alpha. about it. Yeah, it is. Yep. It is the alpha, yep. which represents a strong ox, a leader, mm -hmm. uh, someone that is strong, and someone that is laboring. Mm -hmm. Because an ox is a very strong animal. But let me tell you, this, this is interesting. Usually when an ox is paired with another ox, it's paired with 
an ox that has lesser strength because the older ox that is fully matured needs to teach the younger ox oh. how to carry the burden. And the Bible tells us that, that the weaker vessel is woman. No matter how strong a woman might be, and you have some women out there that look stronger than men. I've seen it, you know, with all the silicones and all that stuff that they eat. I don't know what they eat, but they look like men. Even their features change. That's not natural, not good. Um, but it says that the, the, the female is the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean that she's weak mentally. It doesn't mean that she's weak uh, in her character. But it means that in a natural sense, if you put a big man with a big woman, uh, most likely you still may have a, a difference of strength. That's just the way it is. Uh, can a woman beat up a man? I, probably so, but it's not the natural thing. Now, the ox, also, <clears throat> what happens is that they put, it's actually a shepherd's staff, that they put a rod on the back of the ox to team them up together. But the burden of the weight falls mostly upon the 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 most stronger ox mm -hmm. because the younger ox is not able to bear all the weight the that weight. the mature mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. see when it comes to that anar and it's actually the first letter also in ish mm -hmm. husband in the old testament wow and so what does that tell me is that i have to take the responsibility as a husband it falls upon my shoulder we are equally yoked but the burden is upon my shoulder when the Lord has me give an account for my marriage. He says, you come over here, let's talk. Because she is the weaker vessel. She's not to be expected to be the man. And I hope that falls upon the ears of those who know what I'm talking about. A woman cannot be a man. And a man cannot be a woman. And next time you look at yourself in the mirror... See what God made you. And I want to just, I just wanted to throw that out there because there's you a lot of people out. believe that <laughs> a woman could be a man and a man you could be a woman. Out, it doesn't work that way. No matter how much you try, you can get all the operations you want in the world. It's not going to happen before God. You still are what he made you. And so I have to give a responsibility for my marriage. And God looks to me. And that's why when you go back, Anar, again, it's interesting because here we have also the noon, which represents a fish. Mm -hmm. So here we are with two fishes in the same pond, in the same water. Amen. That's what marriage is. But the strength of marriage falls upon the shoulder of the husband. That's why what she said in the very beginning is, is so important. Mm -hmm. A man has to understand and know the concept of how great that sacrifice is in order for him to love his wife in that way i've studied the sacrifice of christ and one of the things that i've learned is that he had to be crushed mm -hmm. in order for the blood to be poured out and as a husband i have to be willing to be crushed first and carry the burden because the rod is upon both of us but he says you are the stronger ox and you must teach the other ox who is not as strong to bear the weight because that ox will eventually grow up and be just as strong. And so does that make the woman the weak, the weak of, the weaker vessel in that sense? No, because a woman can be strong in strength and do things that a man can. In Christ, there is no difference. There is neither male nor female as far as equality, as far as equalization. Like, like, like the word equalization in music. It is the same. Mm -hmm. She can do what I can do, and sometimes even better. But the point is this. When it comes to responsibility, God calls me, not her. If she disobeys a command, I said command because the man is the head. And remember, Christ is the head. He commands the church. It is my responsibility to use my commands wisely according to the word of God and not push it upon her, but give her a sense of authority in my command that she would be able to look at it and say, this is a command from the Lord and I will submit mm -hmm. to that command mm -hmm. as unto the Lord. Amen. Um, one more about Ish. Um, in R, excuse me, in R, the last letter actually is R, which talks about Resh. Mm. And the husband. And the Resh is what? The head. The head. 
The head. Covering. The covering. The hat. That's the where hat. the hat goes on. The hat. And he is a stronger ox. So he is a rock, but he also is a father. He's also a father to the wife. And let me say this very carefully because a lot of people say, wait a minute, what are you saying? Yeah, I believe that uh, uh, a woman in some ways marries her father. Here's, here's the mystery of it. Here, <laughs> why, <laughs> she tells me, you're just like my father. Yep, I do. And I tell you, you're just like my mother. You know something? She has traits of my mother. That's just the way it is. Watch this. Here's the mystery. A woman marries a man, and she never knew her father. I guarantee you that that gene is in her, and she doesn't even know it. So that's the mystery. Did, didn't Paul call it a mystery? In the end, he says, this is a mystery. Because for this reason, a man leaves his parents, leaves mm -hmm. his mother and father, and cleaves, and cleaves to, to his wife. wife. Notice mm -hmm. the wife doesn't, although she has to leave her parents, the emphasis again is that the husband leaves the place where he is comfortable and begins his own mm -hmm. family traits, his own, excuse me, his own family uh, traditions and et cetera. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe also that is because when the husband leaves the wife, now he has the responsibility. Total of sure. being yeah. the head and nobody, you know, when you're living with your parents, mm. they're doing everything, yeah. you know, and there's a man there already that mm -hmm. is in charge. Mm -hmm. But once you leave that place, now you have to be the man mm -hmm. and you have to, and now you've been placed in that position mm -hmm. where you have to take care of the household, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the sense, you know, your, your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, let's go to the next verse because we're, we're going to go, you know, mm -hmm. to talk about that he might sanctify and cleanse her in the washing of the word by, excuse me, by washing of the water by the word. I want to ask you a question. In the time that we've been together, what has um, my teaching you the ways of God? Because that's my responsibility. Although you may know the way of God and you study for yourself. No, I understand. What has it done for you? Absolutely, it has helped me to grow. I, um, I, I mentioned this even in the beginning um, yesterday when we first started this, that I had a problem with the word submission. And, and to some extent, I still do. I mean, he used the word command a little earlier today, and I was like, boom, you know, it just, we do want not to have to listen to words like, I command you, okay, but of course it's not done that way in the Lord, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I've grown, I've grown a lot because I've been married for thirty years. This is a whole new thing for me. Um, thirty years ago, it was a whole new thing for me. I've never had been married before. Um, I've never really been in a seriously committed relationship before, and for me to now be in a relationship and the marriage for 30 years, mm. it is, it's only God, and it's through his word. And, and I didn't know a lot of the word when I first got married because I was only saved like a year, and he was already saved like six years. So um, it, it helped a lot to know, it helped a lot that he already had some foundation in the word of God because because of that, I was able to grow in the word a little more. Otherwise, it would have been a little slower, I think, yeah. you know. And she said she said to herself she had a problem uh, with submission. I think we all do in, in that sense. Um, and uh, in our first month of marriage, she, uh, she politely told me that I was a donkey. Not in those words. <laughs> Well, it, 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 you know what? Oh, right after that, right after that, listen to this now. There's a story behind this. There's a story behind everything. You know, we, we were fresh. And um, I said, really? So the, her spiritual mom, who's a great lady, uh, and I want to recognize her, Anna Vilafania, great man, great woman who raised up men and women for the Lord. She was just, she's just, uh, she's, she's still alive. still alive, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And um, she signed us up for a marriage seminar <laughs> um, and 
she didn't know anything was going on, but we went. We went to the church, and it was Bayridge Christian Center at the time, still is. And um, we sat there, and we heard a lot of things, and, and most important things of marriage, you know. But there was one thing, as I was sitting there, and all this that came, a phrase came into my heart, and that was, we're committed to making it work. And um, maybe tomorrow we'll show you the sign that we have. Um, so Way Out was a place where Anna Villafania, uh raised up. They had a woman's house and a men's house, mm -hmm. and they got together. Mm -hmm. and, and so God gave me the privilege to teach in that place, even before we got married. And um, what was interesting is that one of the, the young men there said, um, I, I, I gave him the term about, you know, we are committed to making it work, and it, it flashed in his heart, and he made us a sign, a little sign. It's not very attractive, but it says we are committed to making it work. And we, we still have that sign, and it's, it's prominent in our marriage. That is our theme. Our theme is we're committed to making Amen. it work. Yep. And see, one of the things that happened is that we always had that sign hung up, and, and one of my friends came one time, and he said, um, there's something wrong with the word committed. And I said, what's wrong with it? He said, it's supposed to be two T's. Two T's. And it was only one T. And I said, no, there's only one T in the word committed. He said, no, there's two. That's how it's spelled with two. I said, yes, but it means one. It represents the cross. So I took that opportunity and never changed it because the word committed or commit, the word committed still bears one cross. And Amen. that I have to bear the cross for my wife, Amen. and she has to bear the cross for me. We both must die to ourselves in order to live for one another. Amen. And you know, the word, the, that word there, sanctified in that verse of scripture, is also yes. is, 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 is to make one holy. That's correct. Um, and to purify them and consecrate them unto the Lord. <laughs> and I've, um, cer it says ceremonially and mentally. So that's just showing us that it, not only do we, you know, we speak the, the word to one another or you teach me the word according to the scriptures and stuff, but also it's supposed to do something for us, for me mentally, build Absolutely. me up. Absolutely. And and not only does it show your respect for me by teaching me the word, way of, of, of the Lord, but it also helps me to respect others. That's correct. And you know, holy means to hear. The word holy is an old word of consecration. means to set aside. Mm -hmm. If I see something, it's my responsibility to say, sweetheart, come here, let me show you something. And um, hopefully she receives it with grace. If I show her the word of God, the word of God says this. But now here, look at what John 17, 17 says. This is the great prayer of Jesus Christ as the high priest. Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is the truth. And so it is my responsibility to teach her the truth. And through that truth, sanctify her. Set her aside to be holy. This is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that she can't teach me. She teaches me. She gives me things from the word. But again... Being the heavier ox, it is my responsibility that the rod is upon both of us, but I have to hold her up. Remember, she's the weaker vessel. Does it mean, again, that she can't hold herself up? No, but it's talking about the spiritual aspect. I have to sustain her. I have to hold her up, and I have to make sure that she doesn't get in trouble. And it's my responsibility, he says, to sanctify her and wash her. So the word of God that comes from my mouth is supposed to be refreshing to her. Mm -hmm. That she says, wow, thank you for washing me. Thank mm -hmm. you for giving me that cleansing because I didn't know that. Very important. Again, there's, I know there's women. What are you saying? That I can't teach? No, this is not about that. But we're talking about head and authority. <clears throat> We're going to get later to that also uh, and see how and even the one, woman. one yeah. of the explanations is to purify internally mm. by renewing of the soul. Oh, ah, well, yeah. The soul, the nefesh, the nefesh. Amen. It's still being saved. We're saved in our spirit. We're still being saved in our souls. That's why the word of God here, come on, this word, this word is the water to our souls. And so when we take in the word, we are washing our souls. Very important. Okay. So now it says here also, not only by washing of water, but it's by the word. Make sure that everything that is done is by the word. You know, I put a lot of time in study because I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth so that I can speak the truth to my wife. 
And it's my responsibility that uh, in my marriage, I have to watch. I have to be careful to make sure that everything is on point. God is looking to me to, to, uh, to lead my home in a godly way. And I can't do that if I don't know what God's truth is. 27, that he might present her as a glorious for himself, a congregation, not having spot or wrinkle or any such a thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Let me just say this right here. I used to think about this verse of scripture and a lot of people talk about, and I've heard the preachings, you know, that God is coming back for a church uh, uh, without spot or wrinkle, but she has to be cleansed first. God is cleansing the church. I want to let you know that is not the interpretation here. Hmm. The interpretation is that Christ on the cross already made her spotless. Amen. Amen. Made her blameless. You read the scriptures that we are blameless before God. Mm -hmm. He's coming back for the spotless church that he cleansed. Be ye holy as he is holy. As he then. is holy. First, first Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. as, for as it is written... Be ye holy, for I am holy. And therefore, the practice of being holy is our responsibility. Our position of being holy With is what already. he already did. Mm -hmm. And so we are that's spotless right. before, the, before the Lord. You know, that's why marriage is important. That's why God hates divorce. And on Friday, I'm going to get into the bride of Christ, both Old and New Testament, to clarify some things because people are saying some things about it. And I looked at it in Scripture and I want to present that later on Friday, God willing. And so we see here that he says here, without spot or wrinkle. Now, if 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 practically I see something, I go, you know, babe, uh, this needs to be done like this. And I show her that. It's up to her now to say, I receive that or rebel against it. And at that point, I have to pull back and let the Lord deal with her. And in either fashion, when I give her something, the Lord has to settle that in her heart. So men have a very big responsibility in their marriage, as Christ did for us in our lives, right? Absolutely. And so my concept here is that we have a responsibility to cleanse our bride, to teach our bride, to instruct and that's just basically it when it comes to this, because we can keep on this here. But I want to read something here, that he might sanctify. The great object of the Redeemer was to purify and save the church. The meaning here is that a husband is to manifest similar love toward his church, uh, his wife, excuse me, and a similar desire that she should be prepared to walk before him Amen. in white. Amen. You know something? I'm going to say this. I can look into a, a woman's eyes and see if her husband is treating her right. You know why? And I'm going to leave this right here. We, we have studied this a while back. Yes. And the Bible says about Joseph, and remember that he had dreams. And one of the dreams is that there were, there were 12 staffs, and the 11 staffs bowed to his staff because God was preparing Joseph mm -hmm. to be the governor. Mm -hmm. And he told this to his his brothers, you know, his dream. And then his father was present. He said, I also, and, and also the sun and the moon bowed before my staff. And Jacob immediately says, do you think that I and your mother is going to bow to it? And listen to what I'm saying now. Jacob, when it came to the staff, it was his brothers. But when it came to the sun and the moon, he equated that to marriage. Now, the moon doesn't have any light of itself. But it has a property in it that reflects the sun. That's right. And that's why the moon at night, it looks like it's glowing. Mm. And I realize this. If I look at a woman, a wife of another man, and she don't have that glow in her eye, when she looks at him or she talks to him, I go, something is wrong. And I want to let you know there's a glow in my wife's eye. <laughs> he made sure he mentioned that. That's funny. She still hears my preaching. She still I do. hears my teaching. She still looks at me with love, and she respects me, and it's easy for me to give her the word of God. Whether she wants it or not, it is my responsibility. And so husbands, love your wives as Christ loved his church. I'm going to leave the last one for you. That was the last one. Then you're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just wanted to say that 
also um, when he, I still listen to his preaching because when he speaks the word of God, it pricks, it pricks me. There are, there are very few um, ministers out there that when they speak, it actually makes me want to, first of all, want to speak the word myself and share with others. But second of all, to um, want to change in my life. That, that that word is speaking to me and it's changing something within me. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, through the grace of God, um, that happens. So I don't know if it makes sense what I just okay. said. But, um, yeah. Excuse, excuse me, you know, uh, <laughs> tearing here, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's, just, it's just a blessing, you know. It is a blessing because, you know, I mean, after 30 years, you don't, Hardly ever want to hear your husband speak. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's good. He's good. Father, we thank you, Lord uh, God. Thank we you, give Jesus. you glory. We give you honor. And we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord Father, for all those that have joined us this morning, Lord God. And just just to share, just to be a part of <laughs> our day and, and our you, story. Yeah. So we thank you, Lord God, and we just bless each and every one, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. amen. Husbands, I command you, love your wives as Christ loves the church. Amen. Amen. God bless.